Hi, my name is Phil and I am a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. Now, in my previous videos, I looked at things like planetary migration in a disk. But one thing I didn't mention was it can't just continue forever. So we know that planets are not where they actually form. They end up somewhere else. And it's because they migrate and interact with the disk that they're forming in. But in order to explain what we actually see in the real world when we look at on and discover exoplanets, then we need a mechanism to actually stop that at some point, because otherwise they will basically just carry on going and they will fall into their star. So there must be something that limits that inward migration. So if you haven't actually seen any of the planetary migration videos, then just a quick recap, really. And this relates to planet formation, basically, because we know they don't exact, well, they don't always exist where they form they move as they form during the formation process so they don't always stay on the same orbit especially when they're actually forming they actually can move inwards and they can move out specifically things like the hot jupiters they don't form close to their star they can't there's not enough material in the disk that's forming around the star to grow such a large planet so they have to form further out and then migrate inwards so it's a fairly common or fairly understood mechanism that these planets do migrate around their stars. So stars typically form from the collapse of gas clouds. Now, if you want to go into more detail, you can get multiple stars forming together and these clouds fragment and you get binary stars. But let's just assume a single star, they form from the gravitational collapse of these large gas clouds. As that collapses, it forms a disk around the star. So at the very centre, you have a star forming in the dense centre. Whilst that star is still forming, because it's not a star whilst it has a disk, in this flat-ish flat -ish disk around the outside of the star, the planets begin to form as well. And they have a, a finite time to actually grow, because once that star reaches the main sequence, it actually becomes a star and is generating energy due to fusion of hydrogen, it will blow the disk away and it just leaves whatever planets are there. So they have a, a finite time to do that. And these are some images, actually, of some disks around young stars that have actually been imaged. These are real ones. So we know that this is actually how planets typically form. Now, during that process, as I mentioned, they're forming in this disk, and they can move inwards or outwards. And there's a few different mechanisms that explain which way they go, how fast they move. So you might want to check out some of the other videos I've done if you haven't seen those already. But the main mechanism really is that they just don't form where they are. So for example, the hot Jupiters, they, they, they don't form where we see them. Not enough mass, as I mentioned before. But basically, there's a limit. Now, this is the Exoplanet Archive, a plot from that. If you haven't looked at that yet, it's pretty good. It's got a catalog of all of the discovered exoplanets so far, as well as lots of candidates, ones that haven't been confirmed, which are, they've got a signal, they just need follow-up work basically, and you can get your own plots, your own data, there's everything you need to know about exoplanets there. But if you plot them, so what I've done here, we've got the orbital period of planets against their mass, and this is all of the planets that have been detected so far, and the different colours represent the different detection techniques. But if you look at that, there's kind of like a, a limit to how close they can get to their star. So the orbital period, the shorter it is, the closer it is to a star. And it seems to be around about 0.01 AU. We don't really find planets any closer than that. I mean, that's pretty close if you think about it. that's 1% the orbit of Earth. So there seems to be a limit to how close they can get to their star and they, they seem to stop, basically. So there has to be a mechanism stopping it. Now, what we suspect is that this migration, this inward migration, is going to stop when the disk dissipates. So that disk does not go all the way up to the star. It has a inner truncate, truncated edge, like a sharp edge to that disk where it stops. And we suspect that once the planet kind of makes it close to that, that inward migration is then going to stop. There's insufficient material to migrate. And why do we need material? Well, it's the migration occurs due to the interaction between the planet and the disk. So 
what can be causing that inner truncation? Well, it could be so due to uh, these stellar magnetospheric winds. So basically magnetic driven winds could be doing it. You could have Roche lobe overflow, interactions with the magnetosphere, orbital resonance with dust sublimation radius. There's, there's a quite a few things that can actually cause a truncation of that inner edge of the disc. And it could be a combination of all of those. So first, there could be a inner truncation due to essentially mag the magnetosphere or the, a magnets magnetospheric trunk disc truncation that's quite a mouthful actually so basically due to the magnetic field of the earth of, not the earth the star which are quite significant on young stars they're quite magnetically active then it can essentially cause a inner truncation of this disc loads more details there but basically it can cause a lack of material quite close to the star and what happens is the interior one to two resonance with the planet reaches that and it no longer actually migrates. Now you're going to ask me, what on earth does that mean? Well, if we look back on the type one migration, which again is another video, more details are on that. If you've got a planet and they're most likely a terrestrial planet at this one for type one migration is they create spiral waves. So their gravitational interaction with the disc distort the disc and you get an inner and an outer spiral wave. Those waves travel slower or faster than the disc itself. It means they they change their angular momentum, basically. And the interaction of those spiral waves on the disc and the planet means that the planet either loses or gains angular momentum. Now, the outer spiral wave exerts a greater torque on the planet than the inner one. And you can probably see that by looking, actually, it's a bigger wave. So they're both exerting opposing torques on this planet and there's an asymmetry between the two so it means depending on where that planet is in the disc it will push it in or out and most often than not it's actually pushed inwards because of the imbalance between these two spiral in a way or sorry the, the two spiral waves outer and inner now in this scenario here because of the imbalance the planet will lose angular momentum and then it migrates inwards towards its star. So it kind of goes inwards. We get there, we start to get like a hot Jupiter, something like that. Because what you have to bear in mind is whilst it's migrating, it's still actually growing off the disc. So it, it increases in size as it gets closer as well. Now, this migration is going to halt when that inner spiral enters the magnetically evacuated portion of the disc. So when that spiral wave reaches there, it's no longer going to transfer any angular momentum to the disc. So it kind of gets halted at that point there. There's no material, lack of interaction, so it kind of stalls and it reaches that point there. So that kind of halts the migration. It doesn't fall into the star, because if they did, we wouldn't find any close-in planets. So we know there is a mechanism stopping them. Now, the next mechanism could be due to this Roche lobe overflow. So when migrating planets get close to the star, their radius can actually exceed the Roche radius or the Roche limit. What does that actually mean? Well, probably the best way to explain this is with moons, I suppose. And the Roche radius, the Roche limit, is the distance that a smaller object like a moon can get to a larger body before it disintegrates due to tidal forces. So once it gets close enough, the tides are so great from the star or the planet that it gets pulled apart. Now, when a migrating planet moves inwards, it gets close to that limit and its physical size is bigger than its actual Roche radius of the actual planet itself. So it kind of overspills it and the outer atmosphere, let's say it's a gas giant, is actually lost and it transfers onto the star. So mass goes from the planet to the star because at this point here it's so close that the tides are stripping the outer layers. The planet isn't big enough to hold on to its, its, its own mass. Now because it loses mass, uh, to conserve angular momentum because material is falling onto the star, in order to balance the system back out again, the planet then actually reverses and will migrate outwards to conserve that angular momentum. Now the next one 
is due to a truncation due, well, due to the dust sublimation radius. So very close to the star, it's going to be quite hot. And this will be a distance where the actual dust in the protoplanetary disk actually um, sublimates. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's the process where a solid changes directly into a gas without becoming a liquid. So those dust particles get so hot, they actually sublimate and they become gas. And at that point, you don't, you don't have a solid disk that the planet can then interact with. So this happens so around about 100, and, not 100, 1,500 Kelvin. And that is around about an orbital period of six days that occurs, which is quite close to the star. So that is where it actually occurs. And then you get this kind of clearing of the solid dust material at that point. Now, planets with orbital periods of about three days will halt migration once the exterior spiral wave reaches this region on the outer part. So they go inwards. And then when the outer part reaches that, again, they can no longer interact with the solid material in the disk. And it then halts the migration, basically. So that's basically it, and some possible mechanisms which may halt the migration for migrating planets. Now, if you find the videos helpful, useful, you enjoy the videos, then do consider becoming a member. I have lots of extra videos in the member section, and it just generally helps support the channel as well. So thank you for watching.